All right. Hello, everybody. How you guys doing today? It's Tuesday at 530 here in California. And we are now live on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, all that good stuff. So we have a bit of advice today with Sean Mulroney, like baloney, but not full of baloney. Um, <laughs> we have over 100,000 <laughs> likes on Facebook. Um, and I'm Joshua Roberto, the show host today, and I'm from Alabama originally. I moved out here to California and ended up starting my own business, so I'm a young entrepreneur. I'm 27 years old, and so we're going to get a little bit of advice today from uh, Sean Mulroney. So, uh, Sean, if you don't mind introducing yourself a little bit. <laughs> well, what's up? Uh, no, I am not full of baloney. Uh, thank you for that introduction there, Josh, and I'm glad from you, you're from Alabama. That's you know, right. Sweet Alabama. home. Sweet home, Alabama. That's right. Man, man, man. That's right. <laughs> uh, and then you, you got culture shock out in California, right? From Alabama to right. the, to the fields of, uh, to the fields of California. But well, thanks for having me on here, Josh. And, you know, I appreciate it. Um, of course, shout out to, to Dennis too. Dennis is yes. a good friend. I look up to him. He's a great, you know, man. Um, so, you know, a bit of advice, and I think we should change the name of the show tonight. You know, it's a bit of advice, but as far as having me on, it's a big bunch of advice with <laughs> me. So, no uh, pun intended, too, Josh, but um, but I, I'm, I'm extremely excited to be on the show with you tonight, Josh, and uh, thank you for allowing me to do this. Oh, no problem. So, te tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your journey, like your bio, like you was telling me a little bit earlier. Sure. Well... Um, long story short, you know, I, uh, youngest of five kids, um, grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, grew up in the, you know, concrete jungle, you know, streets, you know, grew up real fast. Um, my dad died when I was six years of age. Um, me being the youngest of five, that, uh, was, you know, really traumatic to me, you know, and didn't know how to deal with it. And of course, during that era, my, my older siblings, I'm the, you know, like I said, the youngest, my next sister to me is about nine and a half years older than me. My oldest brother's 18 years older than me. And um, when my father passed away, um, you know, it was it was just a bad time because I was real close to him, you know, being that I was, you know, six, uh, me being the baby. But um, I can remember experiencing uh, marijuana and alcohol at the age of six. Um, I'm not proud of that, but I, I was. I thought it was cool uh, growing up on that. Of course, when my dad died, my mother had to work, you know, quite a few hours uh, couldn't afford a babysitter. So my sisters raised me who, um, my sisters are the world to me. My, my family is, I, I love my sisters. They, um, you know, helped me through a lot of things, but, uh, run a lot of, you know, bad choices at that time. And of course, by the age of 13, I was into heavy drugs and alcohol. Um, so 13 all the way through 21, uh, I played sports in high school. I played football and baseball. I did pretty well at that. Um, but then as I started going through my life, uh, you know, drug addiction, bad, you know, things happening, you know, family. Um, so I had family and friends that tried died of drug overdoses, oh, um, heroin overdoses, um, you know, drinking and driving accidents. Uh, two weeks after I graduated, I had a friend die from a drinking and driving accident, um, multiple suicides in family and in my that's terrible. It was all me, and then, of course, I got a reality check. Uh, it is terrible, Josh. I mean, it, it sort of was, was shaking me, and then, you know, my mother was always, you know, my rock. Of course, she was there to love me through all of this, even when nobody else did. Right. And, of course, at 21, I sort of got a, you know, slap upside the head, uh, reality check, and somebody said to me, who was a mentor to me, he said, he says, you know, you're not an exception to the rule. And he says, you know, what if that was you? And he said that your choice is yours, but not the consequences. So the choices that you make, you can do anything you want to. But guess what? What about your friends that it did catch up to them? They, they had consequences. Now, right. you know, they're either, you know, uh, in the grave or they're suffering from, you know, an ailment or disabled or something like right. that. And, right. So how did, how, did you, how did you overcome that addiction at such a young age? Like how, how did you make yourself get more mature? enough to where you realize like, Hey, I've this, because I mean, sometimes that takes people years. I mean, sometimes people get up in their forties before they realize that it's, it's too late, you know? And 
Um, Unfortunately, yes. I've seen it so much that I didn't have to experience that, you know, that I, I learned from watching everybody else that, hey, that's not the road I want to take. You know, I, I want to be more successful and, and make something out of my life. And because, you know, a small change, it starts with just the smallest little thing. And then it, it leads up to big. That's right. Things. that's right. So how did you overcome and, that? And it did. And, well, and like I said, I, I had a lot of fear. Number one, Josh, you know, I, there was certain drugs I would not do. OK, I. You know, weed was my, my go-to, you know, uh, alcohol was my, my main thing. I mean, I drank like nobody's business. I mean, I would, you know, it, it was there. But the wake-up call that the reality was it's like I had uh, a fearful of, you know, here it's happening around me. People are dying around me, right? And, you know, most people that do get involved in drugs and alcohol have to go through rehab or whatever. Right. But I just got, like, whenever stopped, you know, cold turkey, and what happened was I was in fear for my life because I thought, you know what, I'm next. That's what that's what I always felt in my mind. You know, you're thinking that, you know, death is on your doorstep. You're, you know, just one choice away from going down that path. And that I had a good friend of mine. His name's Brad, uh, Brad Cranston, who took me under his wing. And he loved me through this and told me that here, here's here's the plan. Here's what you're doing this is the this is the, the the next step that you're going to take, or it could happen. And you know, I I might have made it through, and I could have still been addicted. But I just said, you know what? Enough's enough. You know, enough death around me. Enough, nothing. I, I had to stop it. You know, because alcoholism ran in my family, and I just said, okay, enough's enough. I didn't want the same thing that happened to my friends and my family to happen to me. And I just said, that, that's it. And I just threw my hands up and I said. You're right. And he gave an illustration about, you know, different people that he knew that are either in prison, they're in the grave. And most of the time, that's what happens. Either somebody gets addicted to drugs and alcohol, either they're in prison because they're stealing to, to take care of their addiction, or they end up in an early grave, or they end up in an institution. Right. And so and it, I, this happens said, on a daily basis. This, I mean, this, it happens yes. every day. So, you know, everybody's like, oh, it won't happen to me. Oh, yes, it, it can most certainly happen That's to right. you. So it's good That's for you. Exactly so right. you had to have a lot of self-discipline to, to yes. be able to go in there and say, you know what? Hey, like you said, you threw your hands up. Hey, it's time for a change. We got to make this happen. You know, it's self-motivation. So um, you said, you said, what was his name who helped you? His name's Brad. 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 Is his name. Brad yes. Branson. Yes. And so yes, how did yes. you meet him? Uh, well, here's the thing. I, I met him through church. Mm -hmm. um, I met him, you know, my mother was really strong in her uh, in her faith. Okay. Uh, my mother was a prayer warrior. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, she used to go out. I used to go out and party all the time, Josh. And my mother would say this to me. She goes, you know, I'd go out. She said, I'm praying for you. And I tell my mom, I don't want you praying for me. <laughs> and the reason why is because I knew what I was going to be doing. You know what I'm right. saying? And it was like, I didn't want to feel that. So the whole time, I I would never feel comfortable. I felt yeah, out of place. Yeah, you felt guilty. <laughs> yes, I had terrible guilt. And I was like, this ain't, they ain't right. And then so my mother, here's what she said to me, Josh, which was amazing. And whenever I came back and got my, my life figured out, she said, you know, she said, Sean, she, she's, she's about four foot, 11 <laughs> inches tall, okay? Uh, from she's My mom's from Dublin, Ireland. My, mom, my mother and father were born in Ireland, okay? I got you. My wife's, that my wife's 4'11", so I understand. Yeah. <laughs> you, yes, you got, so 4'11", and she's Irish, you know? So okay. she told me if I'd get too big for her, that she'd bust me upside the head with a bat, and you know, she'd point <laughs> that finger at me. Yeah. And so my mother, you know, told me, she said, you could ignore what I said to you for years, but you couldn't ignore my prayers. That's what she That's said to me. That's right. That's and so awesome. I, hey, prayer is powerful, that man. power and grip. It is. It's powerful. And it changed my life. And that changed my life That's completely. So Whenever she did that and I told her, mom, I'm giving all this stuff up. She looked at me. We had a crying fest and, you know, I was, you know, hugging her. She was hugging me. And, and uh, she's like, man, that's what she, that's when she told me that statement. Yeah. And through that all, uh, Brad Cranston, who was a mentor, he was taking care of the youth. And by this time I was not, you know, 20 years of age, you know, come, you know, I was already out of, you know, any kind of youth group or nothing, but he took me and took notice of me and said, Hey, let me, let me, let me be there for you. And he was, and I didn't understand what love outside of my family was until that day. And so he just told me and was pretty br blunt with me. And I needed that. I needed somebody just to, you know, I was getting shook, you know, just because of other people, you know, fall into addiction. 
Well, I needed somebody to say, okay, well, you can make it too. And that's when I turned my life around. And, you know, I contributed to, you know, my faith, my praying mother, right. and somebody that cared for me. Because you know what, Josh, here's the b- bottom line. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah. And he cared for me and didn't have to care for me, but he was a constant in my life. And I said, okay, I turned, I did it about face i did a 180 and i haven't looked back since and i haven't touched um you know drugs and alcohol since then so what's some, I, what's some advice that you can give to someone that might be going through the same type of addiction or the same type of uh lifestyle you know what what's your advice to them that you've learned now that you didn't know then boy yes if i knew then what i know now here's here's mm-hmm. what i'd say people have said what would you say to your younger self yes. and i would say that it's not worth it Number one, okay, it's not worth it to put myself through that pain in my body because I, I hurt my body. I mean, I did. I mean, that that's a whole other story. Uh, I hurt my body. It changed. It's my addiction to other things. You know what I'm saying? You you replaced it with other things, and it's just not bad. I, I had a, that addictive personality. So what I'd say is it's not worth it. And then the other thing is that you try something. Remember, there's always that consequence at the end. And the reason why people don't come out of their addiction and they can't get out of their addiction, because you've got to go through the series of doors that got you there, and that's what makes it hard. You've got to go through that, that, that door, that door, and you got all the way out here. You're like out there in the middle of nowhere. Now you've got to go back the same way you came in, and that takes a lot of work. That takes a lot of you know getting around it. So my thing is surround yourself with people that care about you. Get accountable. And get around the support that you need and listen. You know, that's what we have two ears and one mouth. And whenever you're addicted, we're supposed to listen twice as much as we talk. Right. So I make sure that I communicate and who you communicate with and who you hang around with because you are or soon will be exactly what your friends are. So it's who you hang around with. I I picked a lot of wrong friends at that time. Right. Now, I was, necessarily, I was the bad influence a lot of reasons. I'm not going to blame my friends because of what I did. But the thing is, is who you surround yourself with, if you're not accountable, and if you don't subject yourself to somebody that's older than you, that really cares for you, then you're going to go down and you're going to get away and it's going to be eventually you're going to be so far out in the middle of the ocean that it's so hard to come back. And then you're going to drown in the ocean of despair and addiction and not be able to come back. So you know what? Make sure you surround yourself with the right people. Stay That's away from so, the wrong influences. So true. And it's and, and I want to thank everybody for joining us right now. We have uh, Derek Gibson, Philip, uh, Nick Burroughs, Chris Thompson, uh, Cindy, Stevie Tingle, Cliff, Stevie Smith, Dustin, and Shane Johnson. I want to give a shout out to Shane Johnson because he has experienced the same thing you did. He had a really bad addiction, and he actually kind of went viral a little bit on the Internet, uh, helping people change their life with nice. his story wow. and, and, and just wow. by pictures, you know, a before and after picture and sure. that, that it went viral and he dealt with that. And, and man, it was so good to see him come out of that, you know, cause I remember yes. us talking about it be like, man, you know, we hate that, you know, what Shane was going through at the time, you know, and there's really nothing you can do for him. They have to help themselves. And, and he did, he pulled Absolutely. all the way through it and still been pulling strong. And I see his post all the time. That's he, awesome. He didn't gain him a little yeah. bit of weight from what he was, and you know he's riding horses and stuff. And this is back in Alabama, so this lets you know that you know it goes all over the country, all over the world. People are dealing with this, and you know it's something that needs to be addressed. Yes, you know, and it's great that when people do do right things and do do something good after coming from that lifestyle, they end up getting recognition like that over the internet and things of that yes. nature, which is amazing because it gives yes. them a little bit of like push and like hey. You know, somebody cares about us. Somebody, somebody yes. really, you know, yes. is paying attention to me. So, like, you know, they like that. You know, it's it's really good, and and I appreciate all the positivity that comes from this world. You know, which because there's not a lot of positivity, but there is a little bit in that in that sense. When you see something like that, or you know, you see like a rescue dog or something like that. You know, it, it's yes. it's awesome how that fills us with joy, and we need a lot more of that. So especially we shout do. out to Shane Johnson and everybody else that has dealt yes. with with things like that that's awesome, and overcome Shane. it. But um, yes, that's awesome. Shane. So yeah, I just very him, awesome. I just seen him join, so I was like, man, I, I hope that he gets to to hear this uh, yeah. this part of the segment. But um, that is great. So how did you start? If you went from drugs and then you said you started eating and and so tell us a little bit about that journey. Well, here's the thing. 
You know, and, and you think about drugs and how, uh, real quick on this, is how drugs and alcohol was ex- escalated. You know, heroin used to be a dark alley, you know, um, uh, you know, urban, you know, problem. Now it's a suburban problem. Now it's a middle class, you know, it's like the opioid, you know, the opiates and, mm-hmm. you know, the, the painkillers, all that stuff. So today somebody tried heroin. Today somebody died of heroin. Yeah. That's how bad it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's not everybody's going towards heroin and they take that. They can get five bucks. You know, kids are trying it, and you know the average age is between the age of 16 and 18. Uh, the deaths right now. I mean, in, in St. Louis, where I'm from, there was a thousand deaths last year from opioids. And where are you St. located Louis. now? Are you are you located in St. Louis? In St. Louis, Missouri. Yes. Are you still there now? Yes, correct. Okay, yes, awesome. I am. I'm in St. Louis, and um, so with all that, as I say, that drugs. You know, people that have, that have, that are trying it. It's 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 getting. Less and less that the average age of drug use, you know what I'm saying, is getting less and less. What's some advice that you can give somebody that's being um, being uh, like somebody trying to give it to them? Like, what's your advice to to somebody that somebody somebody that you need to stay away from it? Because the thing don't try it, right? It's so you're for don't you you if you do it's so euphoric you don't want to go back. That's why the it's so hard to get out of that. And you, you know here's here's the other thing about heroin too. Um, you know, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, who was a man that was an actor and he died of a heroin overdose, right? Well, he was clean for 20 years. And so this is what happens. You can get clean. So what happens is you build up that tolerance and you take so much of it. So from 20 years, so he gave it up 20 years ago. And then you know how he died was he had to take, to get the same high that he needed 20 years ago, he had to take that same amount that he did 20 years ago, and your body can't handle that, and he keeps pumping it into him to get that ultimate high mm-hmm. or that euphoric high, and that's how they overdose, because you need that same amount that you did whenever you build it up. And so what I'd say to this is that once you take that, it's euphoric. That's why people put it in their eyeballs. You know why? Because it, it doesn't have the tracks, you know what I mean? People are smoking Man. it, but they do, because as soon as it hits your skin... You don't feel it. It it goes all the way. You're you're done. You're numb. I mean, you are extremely numb. So that the thing is, is, is you stay away from it. Yeah. Because the thing is, is that the the, the more you get into it, it's going to take you down a bad path, no matter what. And and people are bypassing because they say, but what about marijuana? Well, not everybody that does marijuana will do heroin, but everybody that's tried heroin has tried marijuana. Oh, and so nice. what happens is they sort of now they're like bypassing it and going right to it. So, so what you asked, and I just wanted to throw that little bit in there, uh, dealing with this, and I've had to deal with families that have lost their children. I mean, big time. I mean, we've we've been on you know walks and stuff like that, and just you know seeing parents that lose their 16, their 17, their 15 year old to uh, overdose is is a bad thing, and they never knew it. They right. didn't even know that was going on. But so what I did is I got out of that. So whenever I did, I replaced it. I had bad eating habits. Um, I didn't know, you know, healthy, you know, all that stuff. So I went through, I played sports. And then, of course, I went to college and, you know, I started getting my, my sleeping habits were terrible, three hours of sleep a night and then eating fast food. I, I eat fast food like it was going out of style. I, I drank pop. I, I call it pop. People, other people call it soda. We get in fights about that. But I'm going to call it pop until I die. <laughs> they call it Coke in, in Alabama. Honestly, it's all uh, Coke. Know, it, it, it's Pepsi, yeah. all, every, everything's all Coke. I know why. That's what I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have a coke. Well, what kind of coke do you want? Well, exactly. I want coke. You know, I, so it's a yeah, southern I mean, thing. Seriously, it's, a southern thing. It, it's it's a war. That's why we have civil wars all the time because over pop and soda and and, and coke. Uh, and um, so what happened is um, I, I transferred that, and then having a bad life. So eating bad, eating late at night. You know, before you go to bed. You know, fast food, all this stuff. So. I gained weight. When I got married, I've been married for 20 years now. I'll be married 20, uh, August 1st will be my 20th year anniversary. Ooh, congratulations. Uh, which I'm, well, well that, yeah, I'm, I'm almost at two my, years. I'm married too. So two, uh, hey, I, I, hey, 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 congratulations, time, man. That, yeah, woo-hoo. That's what I say. But my, my wife, you know, congratulate her because she stayed with me for 20 oh, years. I'm so with you. that's the same thing. <laughs> same thing on my side over here. My wife stayed with me too. Dealt with me. So. <laughs> two, yeah, wait for 20. That's what I said. She's major league. I'm minor league. That's how, that's how we, that's, that that's all i can say man i married out of my league um well, so all of a sudden i when i got married in 1998 i was in up upper 300 pounds okay and um you know i was a functional person that was obese okay i was traveling all over the place you know i have a you know non-profit i started called teens of america i spoke in schools all over the place at, you know 100 100 plus thousand students a year 
And so, long story short, I did all that, got married, and I got an infection uh, in 2000 on my leg while I was in Louisiana, matter of fact. And so I was down there. I thought I got a spider bite, got sick, and found out it was cellulitis. Uh, so fast forward it, I had that, got that cellulitis from 2000 to 2004 multiple times, and then I landed in the hospital in 2004 uh, with Stephen Johnson syndrome from uh, allergic reaction to Cipro. And uh, my leg was swollen like a balloon. I mean, it was it was turning black. Um, I didn't know what, what, what lymphedema was. I didn't know what cellulitis was. I, I knew it. I was getting these infections. But why was that happening? Right. So could it have been the consequence from me putting drugs in my, you know, age, you know, genetics? You know what I'm saying? Bad. So it was like a perfect storm, Josh. Um, you know, bad eating habits, you know, health, you know, uh, putting st- stuff into my system that I should have never put in at six years of age whenever you're not even, you know, your body's not even fully developed. Why should you do that to your body? So I put my body through havoc, if you will. And so uh, I remember being in the hospital. The doctor saved my life. I was one dose away uh, of taking that antibiotic. I would, I would not be here. I almost died. And it was in my mucous membrane. And so I didn't weigh myself from 2000, 1998 to 2004, okay? But I knew I was gaining weight, okay? And so, long story short, I got there. My wife hit me on the scale. There was one on, on the bed. And she looked down, looked at me, and she didn't want to tell me. And she, I said, w- w- how much should I weigh, you know, Jess? I'm thinking, you know, probably four, 400 or you know, over 400 pounds. She says, no, you're 567. I said, what? I said, yeah. She said, yep, yep, yep. And so... All of a sudden, my highest weight I got to, Josh, was 687 pounds. Wow. Um, I'm not. I'm not proud of that. I did. It's my. It's my life. I. I but but I, it's where I you're there. at now that that really matters is the fact that you, you, like you said, you threw your hands up. Eventually, got to your point and threw your hands up, and uh, you're starting it. it over again. And, and that's a good thing, man, because we're supposed to grow in life. I really believe. Yes. That. But go ahead and continue yes. on. Go ahead and continue on, man. Well, in like I said, that's 687. I. I my pain has turned into my greatest platform, though. So twice. As a teenager, I started Teens of America. So my other pain of obesity, which I have been vocal about it, um, I you know, did that, got to 687. Uh, I had a year where I didn't want to live. I had bad hospital stays. I was in the hospital. I had 18 infections since 2000, hospitalized 11 times, and almost died twice. Went, had sepsis, went septic. Um, just bad fever, 104.9. Um, my blood count was 26,000, uh, which is normal between seven and 10,000. And so I just wanted to die. My mother passed away in 2012. Uh, that was the worst year of my life. I mean, I just, I wanted, I had a seven, we, we had my, our first daughter. We, 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 uh, took us 12 years to have our first daughter. And so my Madison, she's seven now, Olivia, my, my second daughter's four. And then we have Mackenzie, who's a year and a half, okay? Blessings. And so, I mean, it's just awesome. So whenever my daughters, okay, were born, it kept on getting real. I knew I needed to do something about my weight. Every person that's obese knows they need to get their weight off. I, but it takes it a lot of courage to talk about it. It takes a lot it of does. courage to acknowledge it. Nobody wants to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of pride yeah. that you got to push yes. to the side, you know? It, pride and also... The fear of rejection. We're already yeah. being rejected. We're already judged. We already have the stigmas. We already have the assumptions that we're just fat, lazy. You know, you don't care about yourself. You're a disgusting pig. I mean, you hear it all, okay? Right. And you don't want to go out in society. So 40% of America is obese in America, 40% of Americans. Uh, 30% of that 40 never come out of their home. And people say, well, I don't see that big of a problem. So 50 to 80 million people never come out of their home, Josh, because of obesity. So what happened is, is that my why are my daughters. When each of my daughters were born, I cut that umbilical cord. I was like, wow, <laughs> it started getting real. I yeah. mean, it was like, okay, I'm seeing my, my girls. All my, I'm like, okay, I don't want. And then to December 26, 2016, my third daughter, Mackenzie, was born. I cut that umbilical cord, Josh. And like a wave came on me. I knew it was getting real. And it was like this wave just, I mean, I remember looking at her crying as I cut that umbilical cord and looking at Mackenzie. And here's what I did. I said, I don't want them to have memories of me in pictures. I want to make memories with them. Right. And I want to walk them down the aisle. I don't want right. somebody else walking them down the aisle. So my why became my daughter's. And when you find your why, 
you find your way. Yes. Okay. And you so can tell you had some is, passion behind that. Cause I can hear you tearing up a little man, bit, man. I, well, it, this is this is this is on like Donkey Kong. Yeah, right now. I understand. This, this is, I understand. This, this is made made me who I am. And would I change any of my past? Never. I would. I would. People ask me, what, what would you do? You have any regret? No. I am what I. If I would have had small, one small fracture, would have made me who I am. Not to have the empathy that I have, the passion I have, the compassion. So what happened is, Josh. I come home and we had to, my, my wife had the, we had to go there real early, like four o'clock in the morning, you know, that when, they, when she had to be at the hospital. So I remember coming home that day and I'm sitting there watching my two oldest play. My mother-in-law was going to take my, my daughters and uh, so I can get some rest. Well, I didn't get any rest. I, I decided I, I've had 30 plus trainers turn me away. I, I, ser- I sought for trainers, Josh. Wow. And they turned me away. They didn't, they didn't want, they said, no. No, no, no. Or you take my product, I'll take you on. And I, I would, I didn't want them to exploit me. They wanted me to take their drink or yeah, their shake. Yeah, yeah. And then, and I was like, and, I was and like, market. No. They wanted to market you. Exactly. They they wanted to exploit me. They wanted me to be their their poster child. Okay. And so I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I, and then I had them. I had doctors were dismissive. They treated me like hangnail well you know you need to lose weight uh, okay what's my hangnail have to do with my weight that's what they look at everybody yeah. has to so <clears throat> i said and i came home that day and there's a gym three miles away okay this is this is good stuff right here i called the gym because i i was on my phone I'm like that, that wave that came over me that day this is the same day mackenzie was born and i called i get on the phone and i and i said man I said, I'm looking for a trainer. And she says, there's nobody here. I'm the receptionist. I said, okay. Well, here's what I did. I said, I'm going to just pour this out to her. I said, this is my, this is it. I'm just going to pour my heart. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I dumped it on her. Like I just gave her the whole tsunami, man. I just said, I gave it to her. You and had she was enough. over there. She, yeah, she was like, she was like, she was like, uh, wow. Um, man, Sean, that's, she, she was really emotional. Yeah. And so what happened, she was, I'm going to pass this on to somebody that I think could help you. And I've heard that before. Yeah. And I thought that was it. But I, I just said, I'm going to put it out there. An hour later, Josh, I get a phone call. I'm looking for Sean. This is he. He said, Sean, Brandon Glore. He said, I'm with, you know, the, the gym. And he says, OK. I said, man, Brandon, thanks for calling me. And um, he gets on there. He goes, man, he goes, man, I heard your story. I got it. I said, I, I she, he goes, I want to meet you. He said, can you meet this week? I said, well. I said, my wife just had a child, a third child. He goes, oh, man, okay. He says, how about I come to your home? Wow. I said, what? I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, I'm deaf in one ear. And I said, that's my that's my good, my bad ear. Can you tell me that again? He said, how about I come to your home? He came. He said, how about tomorrow at 2? I said, man. I said, okay. I called my wife. I said, I got a trainer coming to our house tomorrow. He goes, she goes, what? She, goes, she thought she was hallucinating from the medication that they had her on. She's like, no, oh, yeah, okay, okay, you know, just the pipe dream aspect or whatever. And so and I said, no, serious, he'll be here at 2. So Brandon next day came at 2 o'clock, okay? And um, and I already was, you know, you know, doing everything to, you know, uh, I was trying. I've been on my journey for six years, okay? So for five years, I've been spending getting my mind in shape, okay? It's all, all right. about the mindset. If you don't overcome the mind, you're not going to do it. That's, that's okay. bottom line. That's, that's I tried true. to get my body. I tried to get my body under subjection for years, and it didn't work. That's why I've been on it to be try it and diet, and I failed. I lost a million pounds, and I gained it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Brand, so, so, so what, what was Brand, did Brand? So Brandon came out to your house? He came out to my house, okay? That's what I'm and, talking uh, about. We sat there for two hours, two, two, two and a half hours. And he looked at me. He goes, you're ready for this. <laughs> I said, yes. He says, I'm going to take you on. Well, I like, wait, wait a minute, wait. He said, I'm going to take you on. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, let's, let's go. I did not know this at the time. He wasn't taking any clients on. He was booked. He was, he was packed to the gill. And he said, I said, well, how much is this going to cost? He goes, I'm taking you on for nothing. Wow. I said, wait a minute. I said, that's my deaf ear again. I said, <laughs> tell me that. I said, get it in my good ear. He says, no, I'm taking you on for, for nothing. Wow. And we sat there and I said, Brandon, here, here, here's the good thing. So all of a sudden, it was my journey, okay? Yeah. And he said to me, I said, well, Brandon, have you ever been overweight? He says, never, not five pounds overweight. I said, have you ever worked with somebody my size in the 600s? Right. He says, never. 
And I said, so how is this going to work? I said, if you have he went to four years of college. He's a nutritionist. He's a, you know, uh, whatever, you know, uh, you know, uh, science of the body, whatever he oh, got. Yeah. You know he, know, he, he knows it all. On, on fitness. He know, Yeah. He knows how the, the you know, what, how the hairs grow, you know, right. what he knows, <laughs> yeah. you know, whatever, right. you know, here, do work this, this hair out and you'll get muscles in it. Yeah, I, he knows, I, all, I knows all that. I so I said to him, I said, well, how are you going to, I mean, and here's what he said to me. He says, you want to learn from me, don't you? I said, yes, I do. I said, I, I, I'm a bodybuilder, Josh. I, mm-hmm. I, I build it with the wrong things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I build it with cars, body by bread. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, everybody's a bodybuilder. You just build it with the wrong things or the right, right things. So um, I said to him, I said, well, how? He goes, I, you want to learn from me? I said, yes. And here's what he said to me that changed my life. He says, I want to learn from you. Awesome. He, and, he know what you you you've been through, man. He thought he, he had heard your story. He said, "I want to learn from you so we could help that population you told me about." That's what. And said. so what happened is uh, we waited a couple weeks after my you know my daughter got home, Mackenzie. We got settled in. January tenth, I started in the gym first time. Okay, the first time I was in the gym since I went to high school, and I went to the gym, and he put me through a thirty minute workout. And I tell you, my hair was hurting. My toenails were hurting. My fin- I mean, I was, I, I was, I, it was on. I mean, it was, it, I was like, man, but I felt so good. I mean, right. I felt great. And so what I did is I had a public figure page. I had about, you know, 300 people on it. I did, I did nothing with it. And I said to him, I said, well, hey, I said, Brandon, I want to put my rear end out there even as, as far as I can go. He says, well, what do, you, what do you mean? I said, I want you to video me doing the battle ropes. <laughs> and I did the battle ropes. Uh-huh. I mean, that, that thing gives you a full body workout. And um, he said to me, he says, okay. So he filmed me. He went around me as I'm doing the battle ropes for, for 30 seconds. And we're going a little and, bit uh, over today just to let everybody know. No worries. Oh, we want to hear Sean's story. And our time awesome. came up quickly. So we'll go, we're going to go over too. a few more minutes so, to, yeah. to hear what, uh, what Sean's Last Thank final you. A little thing is on his yes. story, and then we got a gold yeah. nugget question for him. Uh, so go ahead. Awesome. Doctor. Well, thanks, Josh. I no appreciate. Problem. it. Thank. Hey, sorry everybody for keeping oh. that long-winded man. They, they <laughs> t- tell me to. Josh just needs to tell me to shut up. No, you know man, you're saying? good. Shut up, Sean. You're, you're good. Um, we want to hear your but, story, uh, man. It, it's awesome. So, uh, thank you, Josh. Thank you. And he said, um, so he went to the gym. He filmed that. Okay. And uh, so I put it out there. I wanted to do it, be more accountable to my family and friends to show, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in this to win it, okay? And um, so I put that out there, and I, on, that was January 10th. January 14th, I posted it to a Facebook page. And within four hours, it got 200,000 views. Wow. Yes. And then by the next day, it had 1.2 million, reached 2.3 wow. million people. And it went... I had, I got blown, I got blew up. I mean, everybody yeah. was, you know, coming in there uh, all over the world. I'm talking just people, hey, man, man, way to go, man. Yeah, and I said, my dreams are bigger than my excuse. Exactly. And so then all of a sudden it went. And now to this day, my Facebook posts right now have reached almost 30 million views wow, uh, since January 2017. And uh, last year uh, on LinkedIn, I'm at almost uh, 16 million views on LinkedIn uh, Instagram, I might get 13 million views of my videos on wow. link on, on, uh, Instagram. And so I've been featured in Forbes magazine this past January. I was on Fox. I was on NBC. Um, I was on the biggest morning show this morning, UK, um, back in, uh, August, uh, this last year, uh, 25 million live viewers. Wow. And, uh, so what happened is, is it was my journey has turned into a movement, but then turned into the obesity revolution. And I have a hundred plus people that reach out to me a week that are struggling with obesity wow. and that have started their weight loss journey from the time. I mean, I get messages every week. I lost a hundred pounds. I didn't tell anybody. I started whenever I seen your first video, I'm down a hundred pounds. I'm down 50 pounds. I'm down 75 pounds. And then they just started coming in there. And then so it started the revolution. And now what the incredible thing here, um, Brandon, uh, I am down 105 pounds. Awesome. Uh, right now, I'm uh, still still going. I uh, some groundbreaking things. I have now uh, a doctor, Dr. Kip Van Camp, who is our doctor, who is uh, the obesity, our obesity doctor for the obesity revolution. I have Brandon, 
uh, who is now, uh, he's our, he's our lead trainer. And now we have Bobby Capuccio, who's going to be doing coaching for us, who is, uh, who's helped 24 hour fitness, wow. you know, Gold's gym. Um, you know, he's, 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 a, he's, big big. he's t- smoking the idea, uh, conference. So what we're doing is all this is built around. So my pain has become my greatest platform. And you yeah. know what I found out, Josh, What's that? you don't have to be perfect to inspire people. You just have to show people how you deal with your imperfections. That is and so that's true. how I was being honest and showing yeah. I'm juggling. Yeah, you was I'm being yourself. Struggle. Yeah, exactly. That's me. I'm sure. Sh- and yeah. you know what the thing is, is that what's unique about it is there's people that, that have been 600, 700 pounds that have lost their weight. But they only they never show the back door. They always show it whenever they lose their weight. Right. I'm showing it going the whole through the story. process. Yeah, the, the whole, whole story, story and nothing but the and story. Nobody shows that. That is so true. No, That's awesome. No, because so, nobody wants to show. Nobody wants. Yeah, no. the whole body. You exactly. Know? And, and, no. So what? What would and be? You know what the cool thing is, and, and I didn't need to cut you off. Go ahead. So what would be? Uh, your here's what's golden, cool. The last thing. Your golden nugget, right here. Last thing, like you said. What's your golden the, nugget that you have to my tell golden you, nugget? the audience today? Here's what I say: is that you know what? Your past. You can get past your past. You don't have to let your past dictate to you on where you're going in life. You don't have to let anything that, that, that's defeated you to keep you down. And you know what? You're only a quitter. You're only a failure if you quit. Right. You know, failure is part of success. And all success is is failure turned inside out. Mm-hmm. So I've learned a lot how to fail. I've learned a lot on, on failure plus failure plus failure plus failure plus failure your equal success and is it that you've got to stick to it is that not just doing it and trying to get that instantaneous there's nothing right. instantaneous anything that's instantaneous doesn't taste good you got to have that slow cook process that slow you know that everything has to go through and be what it needs to be as far as that's concerned josh right and so what happened is all that i said this and brandon who was awesome my, my trainer mm-hmm. we did a contest back in january with my fox interview and here's the incredible golden nugget we had a contest, and we were going to have. He, he wanted to take four more people on that were reaching out to me at no cost for six months. Okay, so we had them write an essay, two hundred fifty word essay, right? Mm-hmm. So when we, he wrote that essay, we had over we, we had hundreds, almost I think five hundred uh, different people that applied for this. That that wow. was a con- uh, contestant all over the world. So he's going to take two on in St. Louis and two anywhere else in the world. Well, we went through them, we divvied them up, had a team of 10, got down to the 10 finalists, and here's what happened. He took them and came back, and the next step was he was going to call them mm-hmm. and say that they were a finalist, that he's going to divvy the, get it down to the final four. He came back to me after that, Josh, and here's what he said. He said, Sean, I can't take on four. I said, what do you mean? He says, i got to take on all 10. Wow. He took on all 10 our first meeting was January 13th, oh, almost wow. a year to the day. Whenever I started my way right. went in the gym, they came there. And since February, they are now down collectively 300 pounds wow. since February. And so right now we're starting a whole program, a whole membership that we're getting ready to launch. That's going to have the medical evaluation, a training evaluation, and coaching for them to get their change their behavior, change their mindset, and make them to have make good selections in their awesome. eating. So, so they can so how so they can reach you through how how do they reach you? They go to this website, the obesityrevolution.com, and they can reach you Correct. from there. Correct? They can reach me on there. Everything's there. All my my social media is there. They can sign up. We're doing free registration right now. Uh, we had a thousand people sign up last week uh, wow. that are ready that 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 are to go. And we're gonna start getting more and more people. So you gotta jump on it. I, you gotta jump on it. Jump on it. You gotta jump, jump on, on it, on while, it. While you can because it's it's, it's yes, it's yes. gonna be a hot commodity already. It, and so it, it's yes, just it is, Josh. Of time before you you know it's gonna start costing the arm and leg probably. <laughs> because yeah, well, the we're gonna the do demand, make it you gotta do something. You got to, Josh, and that's what we're working on. And oh, we okay. want to make it to where. I want to be the person that I needed when I was in the darkest period. Yes, and, that's, and I want and that, a program that I needed. And that's so awesome because I feel like we should all be that. We should all, and that's the same thing. You know, I feel like I kind of can relate a little bit to that because I'm trying to help my cousin out. He's 18, just graduated, and uh, yeah. he's been working with me a little bit this summer, and I've been trying to help him out. And you know, I feel like the same thing. You know, I wish that somebody would have gave me that opportunity when I was 18. I was working yes. two, two jobs and going to college at the time, so. 
Like sure. it, it's it's so crazy how everybody has different paths that we can all relate, which is why we have this yes. awesome show called A Bit of Advice where nice. we can talk Love about it. these things and we hope that you can relate and we hope that you can learn something from it because that's what we're all here for is to learn and grow in our life and experience things, the good and the bad. You always have to be thankful. I feel like that's the number one thing that we should always be is thankful no matter what, whether the good or the bad, because if you're always thankful, it, that appreciation goes so much further and, and it builds character it and personality. So yes, we does. thank you so much, Sean. You've been awesome today, man. I mean, like, I, I feel like the time flew by. I looked, I was like, whoa, like, we're already <laughs> past the time. And like, I, I was still ready for like the second part of the story. So maybe, maybe we can get on this uh, again Let's another day and have a part sure, I'd two. I'd love it. Because I, I, think, love it. I think that our audience would love to hear from you again as well. So maybe in a couple months, when we have, because yes. we have a whole lot of people lined up right now, so maybe in a couple sure. months we have you back out. So everybody, y'all stay I tuned mean, for the future. We will let you know when Sean's back on uh, on air with us. Uh, but we thank y'all so much for joining us today, and we hope you enjoyed the yes. show. And Sean, thank you so much for taking your time Thanks, out today Josh. and and explaining your your passionate story. And and we just thank you for being a great person all around and helping so many people Thanks. that are scared to come out of their shell. And you're helping them. You're helping them come out yes. of their shell. And that's so important because it's like I was saying earlier, there's so much negativity in this world. It's good yes. to find some positive. So y'all yes, stay tuned. Absolutely. Next week, we have a great guest. I'm excited about next week. Next week's uh, guest as well. So we will see you next week. Thank you all for tuning in on A Bit of Advice. See you.